Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knew what was going to happen until it aired. Cast, crew, there were like five people who knew, maybe. Yeah. Including, I guess, suppose, uh, well, the person who had the, the air tape. Yeah, somebody, you know, the, <laughs> Kevin Riley knew. And yeah. The head of the network knew studio, but nobody on the cast or crew. James actually, I, don't, I never told the story, but I walked into my office two weeks ago when we opened up production again, and there were all these boxes, and uh, it, there was a note on top, and it said, um, in case I die, have a tag sale. <laughs> and I was like, what is this? And, one of, and my assistant came in and he goes, oh, James put that in here at the end of last year. It's his stuff from his apartment because he's in London. And he didn't know when he left if which ending we were going to use. <laughs> So, Are you going to keep the stuff now? What's that? I've already sold it. Excellent. <laughs> so how did you make the decision to use the ending where Joe didn't die? Because the, the one where he did die, that was a really intense final scene with Ryan holding his hand. I think there was a little bit more story to wrap up in season three. Uh, we need Joe for a very specific reason. Um, and he's, you know, he's going to factor into season three and... We didn't want to handcuff ourselves. If you get, if you end it there, which would have been nice because the end of the Joe chapter, but um, I think we can use it. Yeah, there's we're, still we, not. We can. We will use it for the yeah. story. There's a. There's still more story to play out between the two guys, like what their overdetermined relationship is. So there's still so much more to mine between those two, and seeing them sit across from the table together is, I think, mesmerizing. And the two actors going head to head is. There are some of my favorite scenes from season one and, and from season two at the dinner table. So um, and the two of them working together, they won't necessarily work together this year, but they, the way they did at the, in the season finale was I thought extraordinary. It just added a whole new dimension to their relationship. So we're going to keep looking to evolve their relationship and keep them on an emotional roller coaster ride. But there's still a few um, a few turns in that relationship. Can you talk about the, what, how the new season's going to change and how the tone and theme might be a little different going forward from the previous seasons? Yeah. Um, I mean, basically, tonally, we're going to um, have a little bit less score on camera, so we might play it a little more Hitchcockian, a little bit more what you don't see, a little bit more what lurks behind the corners and the suspense which Marcos shoots the heck out of. When, when you go back to the beginning of season one, everyone would ask, if you saw any, you'd be like, that person's guilty. No, no, that, that, that's bad. She's bad. We want that feeling again, that mystery, that that suspense, which we had to go away from in season two for story purposes. Now we're going to go back to that in a big way. So kind of a little bit more of a psychological mystery. And, and Ryan, you know, he's an amazing profiler. So, you know, we talked long about this and um, we're going to bring back his profiling skills and really see that, you know, lead to some answers that they're looking for. So we'll see that kind of him, that superpower that he has um, flexed together. Part of what gave the show so much weight was how much Ryan was invested in the Joe Carroll story. What are the challenges in crafting the new season when you don't have that kind of device there, that automatic investment in that character to kind of make sure the wrong is right? You think it's not. That's the thing. It's like yeah. I, what we have is a story that, how do you say it without giving, you know, it's like uh, it, it doesn't go that <laughs> thing that he has for Joe doesn't completely go away. He's keeping his promise. He's moving on uh, from Joe, but things start to happen, and he what does he do? He slowly starts to get sucked back in, but it's not a repeat of what we've seen. Uh, no. And also also that um, Joe's kind of um, they're New York as a character, and it's Ryan's home, hometown, and it's a city he loves, and it's um, it's under attack, essentially. I mean, there's going to be a, a tremendous... The city will be under lockdown within the first episode. So, um, also, just the stakes, the personal stakes of his home city being under attack is, is just... He can't help but be invested from the beginning, and then he's trying to figure out who's behind it and what's going on and how Joe is involved or not involved or peripherally involved and so he has a lot of mysteries to uncover that affect him at home it's a good question it's a tough one to answer yeah <laughs> you see other characters from the first two seasons come back and can you tease about maybe who we'll see again I, I can't <laughs> it would, um, right a regular character but not in terms of 
bad. Yeah. You yeah. Know, okay. uh, Mendez, we lost her last year. She got in the ambulance after Jana was killed at the house. We get to jump ahead a year, so we know she, when we come back in the first episode, she's she's back. She's back at the FBI. Um, we are going to bring people, some characters that we have seen back into the show, but just in the way that we always have. You'll see Captain Turner again, probably. Um, and there are some, you know, we are going to play with flashbacks. But, and yeah, can't really say much. <laughs>